Notebooks are the backbone of modern automations. They make your edit and workflows instant, powerful, and incredibly useful. But if you don't care about security, bad actors can and will exploit them to drain hundreds of dollars from your API's accounts while you sleep. This is the complete NAN webhook tutorial that covers what alerts want. I'll show you how to build webhooks properly and how to protect them from people who want to abuse your automation for their own gains. Let me show you a powerful webhook that triggers an AI workflow. Here, we have a simple webhook connected to a LLM chain uh, connected to the OpenAI ChatGPT model. And here we have a manual trigger that's going to trigger this AI workflow. Okay, so if I go back to here and I execute the workflow and I click execute workflow, we're going to see it sends information and it triggers the AI. See how fast that AI response came back. Now watch what happens when I spam the same webhooks multiple times. So we're going to go into execution to see this. And then on this workflow, I'm going to click one, two, three, four, five times. And then we should see all the new execution pop right here. Let's see. Boom. Each one of those is hitting the AI API and costing money. Imagine if someone automated this attack. All right, let's dive right into this. So what are webhooks? Webhooks essentially are notification between the applications. Okay, so we have two applications that we're gonna represent with box. And webhooks are a way to communicate between those two applications, okay? But instantly, that's the trick with webhooks. Normally, you would have an API and to both application if they are fairly recent. And then you could query this API and get some information uh, with another tool and then send it inside your CRM. But webhooks are an easier way to achieve that. Basically, an API is constantly asking, it, did something happen, did something happen, did something happen? But a webhook is more like, hey, tap on the shoulder, something happened. And then it's instant, okay? So an example we could use here, and we're gonna make it later in this video, is let's say we have Smart Lead. Smart Lead is a platform to send cold email. And we have our CRM, okay? So those are two applications. What I would do is set up a webhook from Smart Lead to directly send the information on my CRM using N8. And, and the information could be things like name of the prospect, email, and many different things like phone, um, websites, LinkedIn, etc. Okay, all the information you'd find inside the CRM. As soon as the action happened inside Smartlead, Smartlead is going to send this information inside our CRM. So that means. Let's say that whenever someone is interested inside Smart Lead, basically it's a prospect that replied to your cold email and is interested in our service, then I would tag interested, and we're gonna do this later, by the way. Then I wanna send this information inside the CRM instead of just typing everything manually, right? So this is a classic use case of a webhook. You're gonna use webhooks and most of the automations that you're gonna do. Now let's see how we're building a classic webhook inside NNM. If I go back to this workflow that we showed into the introduction, the webhook here, if we double click on it, we're gonna see a bunch of different things, okay? First, we have test URL and production URL. If I click on those, it looks fairly similar, right? But in reality, the test URL is something inside of an end that we use only in testing mode. And you're gonna find in the URL webhook-test. Production URL is not gonna have this test webhook, okay? The URL contains the path, which is essentially a string that you can modify and label as you want, which is something that I recommend doing. Okay, so instead of being this random string, we could say this is AI workflow. Or we could just say, let's say chat GPT test workflow. So this is something I recommend doing because this is called organization. And if you do it, then your future self is going to thank you. Instead of skipping this random string that you had at the beginning, you can use something that's going to keep you organized in your files. And it's going to be way easier to debug later in the future. Also, we have the HTTP method. Okay, so if we click on this and you know a little bit about the APIs, you're going to see delete, get, head, patch, post, put. The reality is when we're talking about webhooks, most of those are going to be get and post. And out of this, out of those most requests, you're going to use post the most, okay? Because information is going to come from 
different platforms like Smart Lead. And um, basically they're gonna post information and you'll need to catch this post, okay? But that said, one of the most common error if things don't work with your webhook is the HTTP method. So make sure that you check the documentation and that you use the right method. In this case, it's post because our HTTP request that was here is a post HTTP request, okay? So I'm gonna keep it like this. I'm gonna talk about the authentication a little bit later in this. We're gonna keep it very simple. Here, as the last option, we have respond parameter. Okay, we have immediately when last node finishes using respond to webhook node. So three options that sometimes you gotta use to send data back to the original applications that send the webhook. One good example of that is Slack, which requires you in some instance to send back a challenge parameter that they send you. So a challenge parameter is some kind of code to connect to Slack that says you received information and you've treated it and everything is fine, okay? The way I would set this up personally is using respond to webhook node right here. And then if this was coming from Slack, what I would do is add another webhook. And if we go on, on the right, it's gonna be respond to webhook right here, okay? Just gonna close this. I would place this like this, so inside in it, and you can have both. And a uh, subtle thing, but the nodes that are gonna be above are always gonna be played first. So Slack requires us to respond immediately. So what I'm gonna do is um, put the respond to webhook right above, and then in the JSON here, I'm gonna put the value. So if this was Slack, this would be called challenge parameter, and the value would be inside the webhook here. So you just paste it, and then every time this runs, this would return to Slack what you need to be returning, okay? So pretty simple, read the documentation of whatever software you're using, and this is gonna let you know um, if you need to do it. But here's the real issue that everyone ignores, and that could be a very costly mistake. Inside webhook here, you're gonna notice we have authentication set to known right now, okay? It doesn't matter if you're in a test environment, you can keep it to none. And in fact, I would recommend you, you keep it to none because you don't want to be sending parameters all the time to do different testing, okay? But as soon as you go into a production mode, you need to be protecting your API's endpoint, okay? Your webhooks endpoints as well. So this URL here, if I leave it open and somehow someone gets a hold of this and this is connected to any API that is costly, so, couple out of top of my head would be AI, so Claude, Gemini, OpenAI, or some things like Email Verifier where you use token or something like Clay, uh, very costly APIs. Well, someone could empty your entire wallet in a matter of minutes or hours while you sleep, okay? So make sure that you have a authentication, and I'm gonna go over the basic authentication and under authentication here, because those two are the most common that I use, but just know that they are uh, ways to be very secure about this and actually also had um, IP whitelist, which is something I would recommend if you work with enterprise uh, and they work from specific servers and you have their IPs. Uh, if you really, really want to make sure that you're secure, then you can whitelist the IP, but not something that I use that often, to be honest. Authentication is just as good for me. So we have basic art here. And if we click, uh, if we create some uh, credentials, you're gonna basically have a user and a password, okay? So this user and password, you're gonna need to send it from the API call as well, the post API call. If I would go in here, it also asks for authentication, which right now there's not, okay? So let's set it up. Let's set some uh, credential. I'm gonna say test and the password is gonna be test like this. Okay, so we have set up the credential. Now I'm gonna click execute workflow and let's test here. If I click execute workflow, boom, we have, an, we have a, an error. And if we click on it, it's gonna say authorization fail, please check your credential. This is basically because we're not authenticated. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, like I said, in the HTTP request here, we have authentication, which we can go into generate credential and also set up a basic auth. So here we're gonna create new credential and we know it's test, test. I'm gonna click save and then click save here and I'm gonna send it again. Boom, it sends, okay? So basic auth authentication. The other way of doing this would be to use the header authentication and uh, we're gonna create some new headers and it's basically the same type of code, 
But then sometimes in some APIs, you can't really put some basic odds. So you need to go with adder and I'm going to show you how to do this. So it's going to be again, test, test. And then here, let's put none, but in the adders, the specific name and value. Okay. Because let's say you, in some API calls, you can do authentication. This would be the way that you do it. And then I click save and this is going to run it again. Boom. You see this works. If I remove the parameters here, this will not work. So let's start it again. Boom. You see forbidden because there's no credential. Okay. So this is how you secure your webhooks endpoints. Really important because if you don't do this, like you saw in the intro, someone could be spamming all your API credits and make you lose a lot of money. Now to give you guys a tangible example of how we set up a webhook for a specific application inside Smartly, let's do it. Okay. So the first thing I would do is create a webhook and then here I'm going to give it a path. I'm going to say smart lead interested. This is for me to stay organized and I'm going to copy this and inside smart lead here, I go on my account. I'm going to click add webhook and same name here, smart lead interested. And then I paste the webhook URL right here. This is for account level, even type, lead category updated. And then let's do interested. So whenever someone is tagged, interested, then I send the webhook, okay? I'm gonna do listen here and then send test webhook. And we should see really quickly, if we go in here, we receive some information. So that's how we know that the webhook works. I'm going to click save. What I did here is basically we're going to send the data inside our table that we use like Google Sheets. So it looks like this. And whenever we tag a prospect inside Smartly, we're going to have the name and the email pop there. Okay. So let me go back here. Let me click on execute workflow because right now this is the test work uh, test URL. Let's have the webhook for real. And let's go back to Smart Lead inside the master inbox. And let's just take my test name here and mark myself interested. So as soon as I press this, boom, this is going to go instantly in here. So it's instant. It's not, kind of, it's not like an API call and it will create myself and with my email inside the table. So obviously here you wouldn't do just a quick addition inside your air table. You would do all other things, but this is just to showcase the use case of webhooks. Okay. Classic problems that you might have with webhooks when it comes to debugging is like I mentioned earlier, the HTTP method, make sure that you use the same one. Like here, if I put this at get, and then I send this again, I go back in here, I'm going to take someone else. I mark myself interested. This is probably not going to work unless uh, smartly sends both. So as you can see, there's no result. It's not working. Okay. So first thing to check is always going to be the HTTP method. The second thing is always going to be to check the authentication. If you have authentication, make sure that it's basically the same on both sides. Okay. So that's pretty much it. The third thing is make sure that the software that you're using doesn't require a response because if it requires a response and you don't have a respond webhook, then it's not going to work. I'd also like to point out a simple organization trick that I use inside my company. And it's basically to use numbers before webhooks like this to uh, basically tag my workflow. So here I will use, for example, 100, 101, 102, 103, blah, blah, blah. And I would basically use the same name for my workflows with the numbers um, inside the NN as well. So if I go in here, I have all my workflows with the different numbers here. Okay. So for me, this is much easier to see than text. So whenever there's a problem, it's uh, very easy to debug this way if you're organized. Okay. So this is why the naming convention for your path is always a super good idea. Your future self will thank you. So if we do a quick recap here, webhooks are actually a way for you to get instant notification from an application to another application. Super useful in modern automation and integrations. Okay. Security is a must. If you work into production environment for clients, don't skip it because if something happened, it's going to be on you. And the third thing is stay organized because the more clients you have, the more workflows you have, your future self is going to thank you if you stay organized. If you don't, well, it's kind of like doing your tax retractably. It sucks. Okay. 
Uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, uh, send me feedback. I read all the comments. I reply to everything. And uh, just as a for your information, I just opened a new school group recently with my business partner, Rob. And uh, we're basically sharing many of our templates that we're currently selling to your clients uh, and the school group. Plus, we're making operations and automations plus AI course uh, inside the school. So for the moment, it's free while we're building it. Feel free to join and looking forward to see you there.